Tonight, Florida is bracing for a landfall from potential tropical cyclone 1L, which is expected to become a tropical storm by tomorrow. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 3rd. Well, it's looking like another basin is opening its doors to activity with the designation of potential tropical cyclone 1L. It is expected to become a tropical storm tomorrow, uh, but as of right now, we are sitting with PTC advisories with tropical storm watches in place for Cuba and Florida on the third day of June uh, 2022. It's day three of Atlantic hurricane season, of course, we're tracking a 1L. It's a 90% chance of becoming a TD or TS within the next 12 to 24 hours. Uh, of course, expect to make landfall to Florida before exiting to the Western Atlantic, where it is expected to strengthen slightly uh, and eventually turn extra-tropical more than likely. In the Eastern Pacific, it's day 20, and it's looking pretty empty here. Nothing expected the next five days, and it's probably not going to be until the second half of June before we see any more activity, um, from at least from what I've seen uh, from the models as of late. In the Western Pacific, uh, remember that little thing where I mentioned how it would be funny if they did something and we keep you updated? Yeah, well, it's now Invest94W, and of course, it has a 0% chance of formation. Uh, it's barely anything at this point. The massive clouds legit just dissipated, but you'll see in the satellite image in a bit. In the North Indian Ocean, it's the same picture here, uh, completely empty, with nothing expected in the next five days. Uh, we are past the first peak, as I've mentioned many times, so it's probably not going to be for a while before we see anything else in this particular basin. With that being said, here's the Atlantic Sun the imagery over the last 24 hours, and you can see that uh, 91L become 1L, um, and it's definitely been getting itself organized pretty quickly, uh, despite the 20 to 30 knots of shear. It's going to be a messy storm, and Florida really needs to be bracing for rainfall primarily. That's going to be the big threat with that. In the Eastern Pacific, you can see more of the mess of the Central American gyre in the Central America region, but west of that, there's really nothing going on. Uh, no disturbances or anything that would potentially uh, start to develop into a tropical cyclone over here. And then, of course, uh, yeah, I mean, this is what we've been dealing with ever since Agatha dissipated, so it's probably not going to be changing uh, in the near future, as long as that Central American gyre uh, is still active. Here's the Western Pacific, and you can see what's going on here. What was 94W decided to casually uh, just die, uh, with all the cloud cover associated with it just pretty much going away. It's kind of ironic how I got invested and then it just immediately died as a result of that, which is not something common that you typically see out of invests. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see what's going on. A little bit of a mess in the Bay of Bengal, as we typically see this time of year. Arabian Sea seeing some cloud cover, but other than that, it's pretty much typical of what you would expect for June. And then, of course, here is the satellite imagery uh, from earlier. Uh, Real Earth kind of died for the North Indian Ocean and the in, uh, imagery, so it's a bit old. And you can see that, uh, obviously, we've been seeing some development, some convection flaring over Cuba. Uh, whether there's a center circulation change going on or not. Here is the sea surface temperatures, and you can see that there is a bit of a divot uh, in the... Um, temperatures as a result of Agatha, a little cold spool uh, pool that remains. Uh, 30 degrees Celsius temperatures are practically gone at this point. Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean around 27 to 28 degrees Celsius, so decent enough for 1L. Western Atlantic is looking alright, 27 to 28 as well, and the subtropics are around 25 to 26. As 1L goes into the Western Atlantic, it is going to be racing into those cooler temperatures, which is probably going to be the thing that fuels this extra-tropical transition later on. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see what's going on here, a bit of 30 degrees Celsius temperatures in the Arabian Sea. The Bay of Bengal is around 28 to 29. Near the Philippines, it's around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. The rest of the West Pacific is looking to be around 28 to 29. A bit of a 30 degree pocket forming uh, about a few hundred miles northeast of the uh, Philippines there. East northeast, really. Southern Hemisphere is looking to be around 26 to 27. Of course, it's been slowly cooling over the last several weeks as we are now past the end of the season there. Here is the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies. We're looking at that weak La Nina. Uh, obviously, we are looking for a potentially a warming of the La Nina over the next few weeks, but regardless, we will likely be staying in that cool neutral two-week La Nina phase uh, for a good portion of this season. 
Atlantic is looking above average regardless, same thing for the Western Pacific. On this day, Blanca was rapidly intensifying, reaching a peak of 145 miles an hour after it entered exceptionally favorable conditions. We also had Tropical Storm Andres, which was on its last legs and about to become a remnant low. Uh, of course, these two storms would kick off the 2015 Pacific hurricane season, known for its activity and known for the strongest storm by wind speed uh, that we've had in the Western uh, Hemisphere, 215 miles an hour. Uh, is what Patricia ended up achieving later in the season. Obviously, 2015 is a completely different year to what we're expecting in 2022, but you can find more of our On This Day products powered by Cyclone History. Their Twitter was on that bottom bar below. Well, that brings us over to the next names in the Atlantic. We we're probably about to be seeing Alex soon, followed by Bonnie. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Blas and Celia. And in the Central Pacific, while you may row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, no matter how far you row, Honey will still be merely and merrily a dream. In the Western Pacific, we're looking out for Chaba, followed by Iri. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Citrank, followed by Mandis. Two names we're probably not going to be seeing for quite some time now that we're past the first peak of the season, as mentioned several times. And the Australian region, we're looking out for Darien. In the Southwestern Indian Ocean, we got the end of the month until at Lama, if we get there. In the South Pacific, we're looking out for Holly. We'll be back for another Choke Weather Bulletin tomorrow night along with more updates with 1L.